If you want to turn this into this, then keep watching. Hello. So, um, I already made one video on how to use Twixter to slow down clips. However, Twixter is paid and not everyone has access to it. So, uh, Resolve actually has another option uh, called Optical Flow. That's built in, you can use for free to also slow down clips. And I'm going to show you how to use it to make clips as good, if not better, than what you can do with Twixter. So, to start, um, I have this clip right here. And, well, really to start actually, before we even do anything, go to playback, render cache, make sure it's on smart. After that, we can uh, go over here and you can see a clip we have. You want to choose a clip that has, um, you know, good movement, fluid, no abrupt movements because abrupt movements will not work very well. Then after we do that, you're going to just take that clip and you're going to cut it frame by frame as such. There we go. And if any of you guys are wondering, I have a script that cuts it quickly like that, so you'll have to do it manually or make your own script. Um, anyways, now that I have them all cut though, all I need to do is select um, each clip. I'll zoom in a little bit so it makes it a little bit easier. And you're going to want to manually select and delete each clip. So uh, that's a duplicate frame for character movement only. So next frame, there was no actual character movement. So I'm going to delete this there, character movement. So I'm going to go to the next frame, no character movement, delete. And so you're just going to do this through the entire clip. And then after that, um, well, we'll start the next step. All right, I have finished cutting these clips. So now I'm going to select them all, right click, new compound clip, create. Now the effect we want to apply does not work on compound flip clips, unfortunately. So after we've created this compound clip, we want to right click and do render in place. You have, um, you can render in any option you want. Um, QuickTime MP4 for small file size, or <clears throat> you can do, uh, AVI and uncompressed if you want to make sure you're for sure not losing any quality. Um, this will of course have much larger file sizes, but you just click that and click render and then it's going to open ask where you want to save it. So I'm just going to save it in this folder that I created here. You can save it wherever you want. And so it's going to render that, create that file, and then it's going to replace that compound clip with that file. So you can see this now has .avi. So we're on the compound clip. So now the next step is we want to use optical flow on this. So what you want to do is go up here, click inspector if this isn't here, video, retime and scaling, retime process, optical flow, and then motion estimation, estimation, enhance better. And if you do that, it should um, start adding that effect. However, it, you won't actually see anything because uh, we're using, we haven't stretched our clip at all. So this is essentially adding slow motion. So what we have to do next is do retime controls and then just drag this out. We can drag it out a lot more and you'll be able to see much slower um, effect. I'm going to just get rid of the sound actually because we don't really need it for what we're doing. All right, click play. There you go. So now you can see nice and slow-mo. Now, the next step, you could just stop here if that's all you want, but it's you really what you want to do is you want to edit it. You want certain parts to be faster, certain parts to be slower. So what you're going to do is right click again and hit um, retime curve. And then by default, it should say retime frame here. If it doesn't, just click this and scroll down to the bottom, make sure retime frame is on. Uh, if you can't see it, if you have a small clip, sometimes you have to zoom in a lot to make sure you can see it. So just zoom in if you can't. 
Um, I can see it, so I'm going to zoom out a little bit, actually. And now this right here is saying my clip's going 33%. If I can take this and drag the point, and it's actually changing the speed at which this clip is running at. But we're going to leave that all the way up there. So I'll go frame by frame now. And I just want to see where the clip is speeding up. So like right here, this is a really big movement and it causes lots of distortion. So what you really want to do is you don't want to slow that down because that distortion is just it trying to decide what the in-between frames of these two look like, but they're too different. So it causes lots of distortions. So we want to go to where there's no distortion and click this button to add a keyframe. And then you can see now we have these two areas. This part of the clip is at 32% speed and the front part of the clip is at 32% speed. So we can just click this arrow now and hit reset to 100% speed. And so now we'll let it cache again. But basically this first part of our video is gonna be, you know, one frame after one frame after one frame, no slow motion, no trying to guess in between frames, which means there's no, no ghosting, everything's perfect, right? And then after that, we have the scenes that are better, so it goes nice and slow-mo. So we'll click this, and so you can kind of see that. Unfortunately, there's another portion right here where it also is really drastic. So what we could do is instead of having this here, I can actually just drag this and move it so that's over here. But, or to make it easier, I'll just delete it. And we wanna go after all the crazy motions. So this is the last crazy motion. So same as last time, I'll click a keyframe right there. Click this, reset to 100. And then this entire first person portion will play at 100% speed. And then the second portion will play at 44% speed. And then you can actually, the read time controls are still on here. You can just drag it and it'll make this even longer. So now it's going at 100% speed and then it's going to 9% speed for these last few frames. And it's gonna guess all the in-between frames. All right, and then click play. And so now you can see there's a really nice slow-mo effect going on there. And it looks natural. It doesn't look all messed up. So you can, of course, end up doing this and get like really advanced with it because you don't need to have just one keyframe. You can have multiple. So I can put another one here and be like, okay, maybe I want it to go 100% and then 9% and then I want it to go 100% again. So those are all options. Um, another thing you can do is you can actually select a single point and then click this and you have a little bit of play to um, drag and create curves. Um, however, you don't, in this situation, the curve should be fine. But in other situations like this, for example, over here, we're making it go at 100% speed because we don't want any distortions. So I don't want to actually add a curve here because that means this side will be curved and there'll be some distortions on this side. So, you know, it's an option, but you probably don't want to do it too much in, in this scenario. Um, click play again, see what it's like. And not too much different because it wasn't a big change, but those are all options. However, there's one more thing you can do, which is you can change this from enhance better to speed warp. And speed warp is just basically the best version. Uh, it's, uh, you know, there's basically no reason not to use speed warp beyond the fact that it is super ultra intensive and hard to um, compute. So I can click this and it'll start rendering it out, but this will take many minutes, maybe even half an hour. I, I don't know. It, it takes a long time, but this is also an option. Um, I would recommend though, you do all of your editing on enhance better first. And then after you're happy with it, switch it to speed warp for the final cache. Uh, side note, if you are using an NVIDIA GPU and you click speed warp, 
and you got a GPU memory error. Um, it happens sometimes if you have a really, really beefy high-end GPU, you'll hopefully not get the out of memory error. But for me, I have a GTX 1070 and I could not get speed warp to work at all. Um, it kept giving me an error. Um, what instead you have to do is go up here, go to preferences, go to memory and GPU. Uh, this will be clicked by default. Um, you want to unclick it. It should be on CUDA if you have an NVIDIA card and what you want to do is switch to OpenCL and then click save. And what that'll do is it'll be slower to process certain effects, but it's more stable. It'll have less crashes and you can actually use speed warp in this instance. Um, whereas with CUDA, I could not use it at all. That said, if you're not having these issues, it is definitely better to stay on CUDA because it's faster. But um, that'll solve that. If you have AMD, uh, AMD doesn't use CUDA, so it'll be on OpenCL by default, so you don't have to worry about this. So just for NVIDIA people. And you have to hit save and it'll tell you to restart. So I already have it set to OpenCL, so I'm just gonna hit cancel. Uh, and that's it. All right, so here I have two clips. This first clip is using the Enhance Better. The second one is using Speed Warp. It takes probably about 10 minutes for me to do the Speed Warp um, to cache it. So just get an idea of how much longer it takes. But usually the Speed Warp will produce better results. Sometimes, depending on the clip, it's possible you get better results with the uh, Enhance better. But in most cases, the Speed Warp will be best. Um, anyways, this is what it may look like side by side. So Enhance better first, Speed Warp second. I'll just repeat that, repeat it one more time, and now here's this speed warp. So there's a few areas um, that like kind of stand out, but mostly if you look here, all by his leg, there's still like distortions, but it's much closer to his leg, whereas if we go over here, there's a larger distortion that's going out like this far affecting like the background so you can see it it's actually going all the way out to here from his leg right now in this portion whereas if we do that over here it's not quite as bad but it depends on uh, where, you're at, where you're at so so yeah that's up to you and another portion is his shadow over here this kind of stands out a lot it goes from here and it kind of like morphs into a larger version whereas over here it right here is where it would start the morph but you don't really see it and then it kind of mostly just appears there so that's kind of a good example of how they're different anyways so that's speed warp and that concludes the uh, tutorial